Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making sweet potato casserole. almost here so it's time to get started with some of our holiday recipes and this is a really good one to add to your list for those big family dinners maybe your potluck get-togethers at church or at work or wherever um, this recipe for Thanksgiving would probably do about eight people but if you're gonna do it just for a Sunday dinner and have it like with baked chicken or a ham or something and it's gonna be one of the main sides you might want to cut that back to about six people. But what we have are about four cups of cooked sweet potatoes. Now here's the big secret. Don't boil your potatoes when you use them in recipes, your sweet potatoes. If you're making a sweet potato casserole or you want to do a sweet potato pie, bake them. Because when you cut them up, peel them and cut them up and boil them, that it waters them down and it dilutes the flavor. They don't have as much flavor in them. So bake them and you can bake them in the skins and it's really easy to peel them after you've baked them. The skins just slide right off and then you can mash them up and they have so much more flavor if you bake them than if you boil them. This casserole has a crumb topping and this is an alternative to that um, marshmallow top sweet potatoes. It's a little bit fancier. Um, I think it has a lot more flavor, but this is why we have so many ingredients sitting out here. We actually have a lot of doubles because part of this stuff goes in the topping and part of it goes in the potatoes. For the potato part, we have two eggs, a half cup of milk, a teaspoon of vanilla, about a half teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of salt, a half a stick of butter, which is four tablespoons, and a half a cup of um, brown sugar. Now for the topping, and we're just doing a crumb topping on this, kind of like what you do on muffins or um, quick breads like banana bread, the pumpkin muffins, whatever. We have a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of flour, a half cup of chopped pecans. And all of the um, dentally challenged folks that are going to be at your Thanksgiving will really appreciate those chopped pecans <laughs> instead of whole ones. And for our topping we also have about half a teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of salt, I'm sorry, quarter teaspoon of salt, just a little bit. And if you use self-rising flour in your topping you won't want to have this salt, but I have plain flour. What this salt is going to do is really make the flavor in the pecans pop. So it's optional, but I like it. And another half stick of butter, four tablespoons. So what we're gonna do first here is we're gonna put our um, half stick of butter in our warm potatoes and let that start melting. And you can mash them up just about any way you want to. You can use an electric mixer if you'd like. I usually just use my whisk and mash them a little bit. If you cook them good and done, it's not hard to mash them at all. If you use an electric mixer though, it is going to make them fluffier and it'll make the whole dish a little lighter, the texture. But that's up to you. Okay, and you can go ahead and add your salt and your cinnamon and your vanilla and your brown sugar. Now I'm going to combine my two eggs and my half cup of milk and I'm going to whisk these just a little bit. Now you don't have to use the eggs in this um, if you have somebody coming that maybe has an egg allergy. Um, we have a really good friend who has an egg allergy. What the eggs do is they're going to make this rise up and it's going to be kind of like a souffle. It's going to have that kind of texture. 
but it will come out just fine without the eggs. It just won't, you won't get that little bit of rise. But with two eggs, you're not going to get a huge amount of rise anyway. It does cha change the texture a little bit. It doesn't really change the flavor. You do want to beat those up pretty good and put just a tiny bit of air in them. Just add that to your potato mixture and give it another mix. Okay, once you've got everything pretty well mixed up, you want to put it into a buttered casserole dish. And you don't have to use a glass dish, you can use a metal dish, but you do want to smear a little butter in it. This is a two quart dish. It's uh, I think like an eight by 11. You could put this in even a nine by nine pan. Probably wouldn't want to go much smaller than that though. Kind of spread it out even. Okay, now we're gonna make our topping. And we're gonna put in our flour and our cinnamon and our salt and our sugar and kind of mix that up just a tiny bit you don't have to combine that real even but now I'm going to go ahead and add my butter now you do want to mix this by hand. It takes just a minute and your butter can be anywhere from right out of the fridge to room temperature. You don't want it super, super soft. The, the firmer it is, the harder this is to mix. And you just want to kind of cut the butter in it. And I say you don't want to mix this with an electric mixer because you don't want to get this so well combined that it's a paste. If you're making a crumb topping for something and you over mix it and turn it into a paste, what it's going to give you is a hard topping, a solid hard topping. It's not going to give you that crisp, crumbly topping that you're looking for in a crumb topping. So it's important that you get it to a combined well your butter all cut up in it good but you want it like a sand consistency not a paste this is the most time consuming part of the whole process if you bake your potatoes even peeling the potatoes only takes a second and you don't have to cut them up or anything like that like you do if you boil them um, you just gotta sit here and play with it for a minute until you get it all crumbly but while I'm doing this, uh, I want to take just a minute. Uh, tomorrow is Veterans Day, and a lot of years I will do a special video for Veterans Day. I did not get one done this year, and this may not even go up until the next day. But I do want to take a minute and say thank you to all of the veterans. There are a great many Americans who truly appreciate the sacrifice you've made for our country and we are grateful for the gift of your service. So thank you all very much. We know that we live in a free nation because of what you have done. Okay, we just about got this now. And I probably could have used a little bit bigger bowl, but I used this bowl because it had a little color around the edge and I was trying to add a little color to the um, display here because this is not, all these ingredients kind of blend in with my countertop. Everything's just about the same color as the counter. But this is what you want right here. Um, you want it like I said, kind of sandy. A little bit gravelly is okay if you've got some tiny pieces of butter left in there. Those are going to cook up and make little crispy pieces around them. But you don't want anything real big. You want it, you know, kind of like sand. 
and you can go ahead and add in your pecans and kind of mix those up a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. And now all we're going to do is dump this in an even layer on top of our sweet potato mixture. Kind of spread it out a little bit. And then we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Now it's already brown, so you're not going to be able to tell much of a difference in the change in color when it bakes, but it will get a little bit, not really even bubbly, it, the top will kind of sizzle a little bit. And then you'll know the center is hot and everything. And how long it takes to bake is going to be determined by a few things. Like number one, if you got to make a really big one, if you're feeding a whole bunch of people, it's going to take longer to bake. If your sweet potatoes have cooled down before you get it in the oven, it's going to take longer to bake. If they're still really hot when you put it in the oven, like if you've got your crumb topping already made before your, while your sweet potatoes are baking or something, and you mash them up and put them in there real quick, it's going to bake a lot faster. But about 30 minutes, just at that point, you want to keep an eye on it. If your potatoes are really, really hot, you might want to start checking it at about 25 minutes. So 350 degrees, about 30 minutes. Now after 30 minutes in the oven, it's sizzling just a little bit and it is a little bit browner. It's going to brown just a little bit, but like I said, it's already brown. So if you're just watching for the brown, you might not be able to tell. But you've got like some golden highlights on it and you probably can't even see those in the camera, but they are there and you'll see them when you make it at home. If you're looking for a different side dish for a Sunday dinner, this is great. If you're looking for something to take to a potluck, get together around Thanksgiving or Christmas, this is a really good option. You can make this, um, mix it up the day before Thanksgiving and then bake it on Thanksgiving Day so that you're not doing so much on Thanksgiving Day. And if the kids are old enough that you don't have to put marshmallows on your sweet potatoes to get them to eat them, this is a really good option. The nuts in it and the cinnamon and the, you know, it just all goes together so good. And the different textures in it makes a really different side dish. Now, if you take this to some kind of potluck, there's always a chance that somebody else is going to bring the same casserole. But if you do the baked potatoes instead of the boiled potatoes, yours is going to be the best and everybody's going to want your recipe. So if you're looking for more Thanksgiving recipes, I'm going to put the Thanksgiving playlist in the description box on this. We've got ham and turkey, uh, dressing, biscuits, cornbread, just all sorts of stuff. All your pies, pumpkins, pecan, all that stuff. And I'll put that playlist into the, the description of this video so you can find all the Thanksgiving recipes without having to search through all of our videos. Thank you all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you have not already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first. <laughs>